Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to show you all of my Alice in Wonderland editions. <laughs> As some of you may already know, uh, I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan and it's my favorite book ever. I think the second book, Through the Looking Glass, is even more my favorite than the first one, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, but I love them both so very much and it's such a whimsical story and I like that every time when I read the story, I can read it in a different way. You can read it as a fairy tale or you can read it as a really dark story or a political or historical story and it's just, it's an amazing book. And after I found out that there are so many different editions published of this book, I decided I wanted to collect them. And I've read the story many times already, but I thought, why not show you guys all of my Alice in Wonderland editions? So that's what I'm gonna... that's what I'm gonna do today! <laughs> this is my very first edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I got this edition from my parents for my birthday and I love the cover so much. The end pages are gorgeous as well. It has the original illustrations by John Tenniel and it also contains stories as Sylvie and Bruno, The Hunting of the Snark, and lots of other poems and puzzles by Lewis Carroll. The edges of this book are gold and so pretty, and I'm just so happy to have this complete edition by Lewis Carroll. Like the other book I just showed you, this is a Barnes & Noble letter-bound collector's edition, and it's a smaller edition, but it's really cute, and I love the cover of this one as well. It also has the original illustrations by John Tenniel, uh, but these ones are colored in, and I just love this edition. It's probably one of my favorite editions. It's so cute. Next is this pop-up edition, and this book is absolutely amazing. If you are a collector of Alice editions, then this is one that you should absolutely add to your collection because it is so beautifully made and it has so many interactive elements in the book. My favorite image is probably this little gardener who is painting the roses red. I just, I love that little guy. <laughs> And then on the next page, we have the croquet game with the flamingos, really cute. And the final page, she is being overwhelmed by all of the cards. This book, it's amazing. Next up is this purple Barnes & Noble collector's edition. I love the quote on the back that says, I've often seen a cat without a grin, but a grin without a cat is the most curious thing I ever saw in my life. And then you have these beautiful end pages as well. It is basically the same book as the pink Barnes & Noble edition, but this one is purple and I love it. <laughs> Next we have come to all my blue editions and this is a Dutch edition that I found on a flea market somewhere and I was very happy to find it because it has a puzzle on each page that you can actually take out and put in again. That's how puzzles work of course. And I just think it is really funny that Humpty Dumpty is called Wichelwachel here. I just find it a little bit strange but wow Alice is strange so that's fine I'm just really happy that I found this edition as well next is this seek and find classics edition and the end papers of this book are so cute with all of the cards so this book first contains some information about Lewis Carroll and then on every page you have these little pictures and a little bit of the story on the side. And in the big picture you have to find all of these small images. So yeah, it's basically a seek and find 
you have the answers in the back and it's really fun to read to children as well. Next is this Mina Lima edition. I love the cover for this one as well. And it is just a very interactive book. So it has all these interactive elements that you can pull out or fold out and they're absolutely amazing. So here you can make Alice grow taller and shorter. And I also love the normal illustrations that aren't interactive in this book. So yeah, it's basically a really cute edition and they uh, also made these books for other uh, stories such as The Secret Garden, The Little Mermaid and other stories, uh, The Beauty and the Beast, A Jungle Book and Peter Pan I believe. So I really needed to have this Alice edition and I love it so much. So if you're a collector, I think that this is a perfect addition to your collection as well. Next is this really small but really cute edition with the white rabbit on front and the dormouse in the teapot on the back. And this edition is very special to me because I got it signed by Alice and the Mad Hatter when I went to Disneyland Paris and it was absolutely amazing meeting those characters there and having a little chat with them and I just think that those signatures are so special so I think that this is my favorite edition that I have just because I have such a special memory with it. Next is What Would Alice Do? And this is a really small square book and the end pages have Alice as queen. And this is a inspirational book with quotes from the original story. So it has um, Alice on being inspirational or Alice on having a bad day or minding your manners and all those kind of little quotes and little messages and they're basically exactly the same quotes from the story but categorized and it's just a really cute and fun edition. Next is this French edition Alice au Pays de Merveilles and this is actually a manga uh, from the Le Classique en Manga collection. I found this in a really small store in France and I just love how cute the illustrations in this book are. I do know a little bit of French and since it is a manga, it reads a little bit easier for me and I'm just so happy that I was able to find this edition and add it to my collection. Next is actually not an Alice book, but it is a story by Lewis Carroll, so I really wanted to show this to you guys as well. It is The Hunting of the Snark and already the end pages of this book are so incredibly cute. I mean, look at that. That's adorable. The illustrations in this book are really amazing and so colorful. I love the colors that they use for this book. And I mean, look at that guy. He is so fluffy and adorable. I love this book so much. It's full of nonsense. It's a really bizarre story, but that's what I love so much about his writing style and it's so cute. <laughs> Next is Alice's Adventures Underground, which features the unedited first draft of Lewis Carroll's text alongside the unedited first draft of Charles Santore's drawings. And surprisingly, I find these drawings more to my liking than the John Tanio ones because these drawings seem a little bit more detailed to me. The story was supposed to be called Alice's Adventures Underground, but since it sounded quite dark and sinister, they actually decided to change it to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. This book also has some wavy edges on the side which I'm not sure if I like but I'm just really happy to have this edition. Next is this really colorful manga styled edition 
the book is actually a novel, but the drawings are in manga style, which I absolutely love. And it has these gorgeous, colorful uh, spreads in the front of the book. And then throughout the whole book, you have 100 black and white illustrations. And I am so in love with all of these beautiful illustrations throughout the whole book. They're so incredibly cute, and I think that this book would be very suitable for children to read because it shows more of the whimsical and fun part of the story. And this book features not only Alice's adventures in Wonderland, but it also has Through the Looking Glass, so it's a really big edition, which I absolutely enjoy. And in the back you have this concept art gallery, and it shows a lot of drafts of all of the characters, and it is so fun to see what they otherwise could have looked like. And it also has many drafts of the cover art as well, so that is a really fun addition to this book. Next is this Japanese edition that one of my Japanese friends brought back from Japan for me as a souvenir, which I am so incredibly grateful for because this is probably one of my favorite editions that I own so far. I love the illustrations in this book and also the additional illustrations in the front of the book. And I think the color palette that they used is so unique and so bright and colorful that it makes it so much fun to read. This book is actually meant for children under the age of 10. Um, so that's why the characters in this book are also quite big. But that makes it a little bit easier for me to read because my Japanese is not that great yet. This book only features the first novel, uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It doesn't have Through the Looking Glass, but maybe there is also a version with Through the Looking Glass, and if so, I would also love to have that one. Next is this Kado Kara Tsubasa Bunko edition, and this is also in Japanese, so it's called Fushigi no Kuni no Arisu, and this is the first book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. This is also especially meant for children. And the characters are a little bit smaller than the other book I just showed you. But it's a great way to study Japanese. And I love this edition so much. I actually asked one of my friends who went to Japan to pick this one up for me because I had seen it around and I just needed this in my life. Next book is from the same series, from the Kadokawa Tsubasa Bunko series, and this is the second novel, so this is Through the Looking Glass, and it has this amazing illustration art in the front that features both of the covers from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass of these books. And the rest of the illustrations in this book are also really cute. I like the fact that all of the kanji in this book have furigana next to it, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to read. And I know that at some point I would have to read without Furigana, and I'm trying to do that, but for reading a novel like this, I think it is very nice and a little bit easier to read the story. Next is this Dutch edition from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which I got for my sister for my birthday last month. And this book is illustrated by Lisbeth Zwerger, and I like the fact that these illustrations are so incredibly different from all of the other books that I own. So most of the books that I own have the original John Tanio illustrations or a more manga-styled illustration to them, but this book feels somehow really Dutch to me. <laughs> I cannot really explain why, but I do like that this book is so different from all of the other editions that I own. And yeah, I'm happy that I could add this to my collection. 
Next is this Macmillan coloring book with the original illustrations by John Taniel. And I really like this coloring book, but I haven't done any coloring to be honest. Um, I am planning to, but I'm just afraid to mess it up. And yeah, I think that it would be really nice to do some coloring while listening to an audiobook or to some music. Next is another Dutch edition illustrated by Helen Oxenbury that I also got from my sister for my birthday. And I'm really happy that I have this edition right now because I saw it online a couple of times and I really wanted to buy it. But the English version was really too expensive for me at that moment. And I'm so happy that my sister found this one for me. I already like the index so much because for every chapter it has like a little character from the story and they're so adorably drawn. And the rest of the illustrations in this book have like a softer color palette to them. And I like the fact that some of the illustrations are in black and white and some of them are colored which makes this a more dynamic read. And the illustrations overall are just so adorable and so cute and so different from all of the other books that I own so far. So yeah, so happy with this one. Next is another Dutch book and this is actually published by a beer brand. My parents got this for free when buying beer in the supermarket and the book doesn't have any illustrations in there except from the illustrations and information of the beer brand itself in the back, which I think is actually kind of funny. The last white book I have to show you is this French edition, which features both Alice au Pays des Merveilles and La Traversée du Miroir. And I got this edition from a bookstore when I was in France, and the French in here is still a little bit too difficult for me, but at some point I do want to try and read it. I just really wanted the original uh, story translated in French. Next is another Dutch edition. This is the follow-up uh, from the book that I showed you earlier, also illustrated by Helen Oxenbury. And I just love the cover of this one. The White Queen is looking so adorable. And the rest of the illustrations are once again uh, either black and white or colored. And I think it is a really unique book because it has illustrations that you can find in no other book. Like you have huge elephants and flowers in here. And I haven't seen that in any of the other books yet. I also think that the drawing style is more playful, which makes it feel more like a fairy tale even. The last Dutch edition that I own is this red edition, which features only Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and it is illustrated by René Cloak. Uh, the illustrations in this book are once again very colorful and really different from all of the other editions that I already own. And Alice is actually wearing a peachy colored dress in this book instead of the blue dress that she normally wears in all of the other books. So that's a really fun little difference. Next is one of the heaviest editions that I own and that is the Annotated Alice, the 150th Anniversary Deluxe Edition. And I really needed this book even though it was quite expensive because it is such a unique book. It has so many annotations on the side of the story and this deluxe anniversary edition has over 100 new or updated annotations. And it also has more than 100 new illustrations in vibrant colors by Salvador Dali, Beatrix Potter, Rolf Statman and 40 two other artists and illustrators in addition to the original artwork by John Taniel. And this book also contains a filmography of every Alice related film that was ever made. So this is the perfect collector's book for any Alice in Wonderland fan. 
Next is this edition illustrated by Yayo Kusama, who is a Japanese artist and is also called the Princess of Polka Dots. And I find her background story really fascinating because as a little girl, she had a hallucination that freaked her out. So she was in a field of flowers when they all started talking to her and the heads of the flowers were like dots that went on as far as she could see and she felt as if she was disappearing or as she calls itself obliterating into this field of endless dots and this weird experience influenced most of her later work and it's so unique and it really fits with the story. Next is One Day in Wonderland, a celebration of Lewis Carroll's Alice, illustrated by Julia Sarda. And this tells the story of Lewis Carroll's life and how he got to write the story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland. So it doesn't really tell the story of Alice itself, but more so how he got to write the story. And I really like the fact that in the back of the book, it also has all of these whimsical words and ideas invented or adapted by Lewis Carroll explained. So that's a really nice addition to this book. It's a really short book, but it's really fun to have this in my collection. Next is Wonderland, Alice in Poetry, and this small book features all of the poems from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, and it also has all of the original illustrations by John Tanniel in there. And I think that it's really fun that with this edition, you also get to see some brand new poems inspired by Alice in Wonderland, written by a whole bunch of different poets. So I think that's a really nice addition to this book. The last and also newest edition that I own is the Wonderland collection, which is part of the Seasons Edition series, and this is part of their summer collection. And I love the cover of this one. It is a whole silhouette cut out, and it's absolutely stunning. And it's a really unique book because only 10,000 copies have been printed, and I like that each volume is individually numbered from 1 to 10,000. So I have number 5,054 and I think it is really unique and fun that they put that in the book as well. Because it really gives you the feeling that this is your own edition. And the moment that I found out that this book was published, I really needed this. And it also has this little blue ribbon in there that's really fun. I do find it a pity that there are no pictures in this book. It only has some of these red pages with part of the story written on there. But yeah, I am just so glad to have this edition because it's so stunning. And the book came with this gorgeous bookmark, which is also a cutout silhouette, and it's absolutely stunning. So if you want this edition as well, you have to be quick before all of the 10,000 copies are sold already. So these were all of my Alice editions. I believe there were 28 editions, if I'm right. <laughs> I do hope to collect many more in the future because... I just love collecting them and spending money on multiple Alice in Wonderland editions because why not? <laughs> uh, please let me know if there are any books that you have multiple editions of and how many you've collected already. And yeah, I try to post every Wednesday and Saturday, so if you want to be notified whenever I post, please subscribe to my channel and click on that little bell icon. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you a wonderful day with a lot of sunshine and books. Matane!